and the captain is frothing. You're frothing, aren't you? Yep. He's frothing. So good to be back on the water, every time, every time. Welcome back everyone. Last week you joined us on a most unsavoury sail to Morocco. We headed inland for a change and explored the vibrant streets of Marrakech. So Mr Jackson says, I could live in Morocco, I really see myself living in Morocco. I was trying to get to the bottom of the reason why. I mean, it's great, I could live in Morocco, but he couldn't come up with any other reason other than the food is fantastic. So. What else do you need? What else do you need? It's very easy to keep my captain happy. Yeah, the tagines here have been out this world and we've discovered a new thing that we can't believe has not caught on in Australia. They, for breakfast, you get a pancake Sorry. A crate. A, see, in England, pancakes are crepes, like those thick, stupid, Loves those crap. those American pancakes. That's sorry, guys. That's a cake. Anyway, crepes. You get crepes with olive oil and honey, and a spiced peanut butter. And it, this thing called amloo, which is we've tried to work out what it is, and essentially, I think it's just almond butter with dates and spices all crushed up inside and then the coffee has spices in it as well and now we have heard some swell has arrived so we are heading down the coast to a place called Imsuan Bay we're gonna miss out Isoria just mainly because it is so popular and we'd rather go somewhere a little bit more off the beaten track and we're gonna see what the Moroccan surf towns are like apparently they're really cute and the captain is frothing. You're frothing, aren't you? Yeah. He's frothing, as you can tell. As we drove through the beautiful landscapes of Morocco, we saw what we thought was goats standing in trees. On closer inspection, we discovered that they really were goats standing in trees. The Moroccan countryside is absolutely peppered with argan trees. These trees make up the bulk of Morocco's agriculture industry and they harvest argan oil. Goats are rather fond of the fruits that argan trees bear, which is why you'll generally see them chilling at the top of the tree. on the atmosphere but <laughs> I don't think the swell's quite there yet. Uh, well, there's swell but unfortunately I don't think we've quite got the tide just yet. Ah. So we might just have to go have some breakfast.
to in Swim Bay other than surfing and puppies, but I mean, what more could you want? around until the tide was right to catch a few waves. Half an hour's drive inland from Tagsahook Beach lies an oasis named Paradise Valley. Jackson's already fixing the furla. We spoke to our friend Rach and she had the solution. Oh, I just tripped over. She had the solution and it doesn't seem too hairy of a thing to fix ourselves. So we shall be sailing to the Canaries. So backtracking to earlier in the week, we were trying to unveil the mystery of our broken furla. We had a little fiddle with it ourselves, but couldn't quite work out what was going on. We were rather cut about the situation, as it was our brand new rigging that broke on passage to Morocco. So we just put two halyards next to the four stay and ran away on our surf trip. We're very blessed to have a friend back in Australia called Rachel, who is a rigger herself. And after a few conversations with her, we managed to get to the bottom of the situation and the future didn't look too bleak. I, I looked at that, they didn't they don't go through the fort they don't go through that foil. In fact they only they don't penetrate the metal. It like sort of just sits in there. So Jackson, right now I've got a furler apart and see these foil locating screws? So you're missing one. So they have a little nipple at the end of them here and that goes into the foil so because you're missing one your foil has dropped down and is touching in here so right now I'm having the same issue having this furler rotate it gets halfway or three quarters and it stops but as soon as you lift this foil up it will rotate 
So your foil has dropped down and is touching in here. So that's where your issue is coming from. So you need to get some more of these fasteners in here. So this is your tack delay. So as you furl, you want to hold you want to hold the shackle and the foil wants a full 360 rotation before it engages this shackle. See there, it clicks, now the whole thing wants to rotate. Hello, something different about you today. Have you cut your hair or shaved? I can't quite put my finger on it. Just got the furler working. Oh, that's right. You've got a fixed boat. That's what's different about you. That's blooming amazing. We could have hung around in Morocco forever, to be quite honest, but deadlines in the form of crossing the Atlantic Ocean meant that we had to leave quite soon after fixing the furler. We were fully expecting not to be able to sail to the Canary Islands due to our unresolved furler issue, so it was a real treat to be able to set sails. Is it good to have a furler again? Yeah. That was a pretty easy uh, set, wasn't it? And that's what it's all about. So good to be back on the water, every time, every time. <laughs> How fast are we going, Captain? Five and a half. Five and a half knots, we'll take that. So we got 200 nautical miles ahead of us, which should take around about 40 hours. And the conditions seem to be good, so we're very much looking forward to this and we're even more looking forward to being in the Canary Islands. So we've got 240 miles on the dot and this is putting us in there at around 3 o'clock in the Arvo. On the pit. I don't know what date it is right now. <laughs> we never know what date or day of the week it is. But all we know is that we're going to arrive at 3 o'clock someday and my Uncle Chris is going to be waiting for us with a lovely, cold, frosty local beer. Is he? Yeah. You need to get your fix after not being able to drink in Morocco. Oh, it's yeah. It's been really tough for you. Oh, shut up. It hasn't. It's it been has. lovely. You've really struggled. <laughs> it always happens. I had a homemade gin and tonic yesterday and we've been fine. But I can't wait for a beer. <laughs> they had these little tortoises for sale and I really wanted to save them and I thought they'd actually be perfect boat pets and Captain said no. Well no, Captain didn't say no, Captain said first mate is a 31 year old woman who can make her own choices. <laughs> getting a tortoise everyone. The thing is, I already have one tortoise on the boat and I don't know if I can really deal with a second one. Because <laughs> the boat's already slow enough. <laughs> I don't need Zanthi looking after a tortoise at the pace of a tortoise. I think that might have been the left. No, this this is a roundabout isn't it? Sorry. Um, can you just go back to the map? I'll just go back to the map. I just wanted to tell you though, so last night right. Jackson said, I know which way it is, it's the fourth, it's, it's left, it's the fourth exit on the roundabout. 
So it's not the hard left, not down there, it's the one kind of um, 11 o'clock. No, that's 12 o'clock. Right, 10 o'clock if you will. Straight. 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 Straight.